Hey now, today I'm going to be in the process of stepping up a yeast starter and I'm going to be actually going right from a uh, slant here in agar wort slant, um, moving up into a 4,000 mil pitch and this is going to be going into a Belgian Saison uh, that I'm brewing in a couple of days. And um, I'm, I'm not going to show you the initial inoculation process because I already did um, a really in-depth video of that. But I do just want to show all of the equipment that a person would need if you are attempting to go through this process and follow how I like to go about doing it. So just for that, I've got my um, uh, 1020 um, wort uh, starter vial here, obviously the uh, agar wort slant. Uh, you're going to need a way to inoculate that, so I've got my inoculation loop here, just purchased at a lab supply store. Um, I like to actually soak that in um, some isopropyl alcohol here, so I'm just going to leave that inverted in there. Uh, you do need a way to not only sterilize that loop as well as the vials, um, but also to create an updraft. So for that, I like to use a Bunsen burner. A person could also pick up um, an alcohol lamp like this. I just find that you don't get nearly the amount of flame or updraft, and it's a lot cooler, and it takes quite a bit longer to actually um, get this loop really nice and hot. Um, but after that process goes on, oh, I'll also point out I am going to wear a mask. That way I can breathe and not worry that I'm going to be uh, you know spewing my beautiful bacteria into that uh, scenario there of course I've got a lighter as well um, after I move on from that phase with the initial growth in that starter vial uh, I'm going to need dried malt extract I've got some just in this tub here we'll be taking a peek at that here shortly I do have some yeast nutrient uh, some aluminum foil that's going to go on these borosilicate Erlenmeyer flasks and I do have those three flasks so for this I've got a 500 mil a 2000 mil and a 4000 mil uh, I don't have my 5,000 mil uh, one here today, which is too bad because I really like using that, but I don't have it. Anyway, um, I also have a, uh, a stir bar, and that's uh, going to be used on a stir plate that's in my incubator there. And also just some uh, defoamer uh, solutions. So you could use that. You could use, um, there are several different products available. I'm using Five Stars stuff, but that's just um, because when I go to boil the uh, wor the um, wort, for the next steps, um, I don't want them to boil over on my stovetop because that makes just a huge mess. So anyway, that's all the equipment from here. I am going to go ahead and inoculate the starter vial here. If you want to check out my video, uh, the detailed video on that for that first step, please do. And we're just going to carry on here um, actually uh, tomorrow with the next step. All right, I lied, this is only a few minutes later here. I did inoculate that uh, starter vial and just so you can see it here, I've got it there in the incubator and that's warming up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And I just do want to point out here um, that I like to run a brew log on everything that I do. So with, especially with these yeast starters here, so you can see I like to track the, uh, the actual strain of yeast and then I go through my volumetric steps here as well as the time and whatnot and uh, a lot of the data on here is just super handy in case I have any kind of an issue which I haven't had but if there was um, I could kind of see exactly what I was doing for steps and timing and all that kind of stuff so I'm just going to get this out of the way here and then I'm going to prep my 200 mil flask um, for that first step which will wind up happening tomorrow but I do want to have that prepared today well, I'm just full of lies today. I also should have mentioned that I'm going to use a scale uh, because of course I do want to be able uh, to properly weigh out everything so that I know what I'm doing. Um, so right off the bat here, what I have is just some uh, extra light DME. Any sort of light DME that you want to use is totally fine for this. And I'm going to have, um, I'm looking for a 200 mil step here. Uh, I'm not worried about that 10 mils that I'm adding to it. Really, it'll be 210. Um, but the way to do this um, is I'm going to want, uh, it's a, one to ten ratio between the, the from the DME to the uh, filtered water that I'm going to be using. So since I want 200 mils, I'm going to get 20 grams of this DME in here. I just have a nice little uh, teaspoon that gets uh, that fits nicely into that wide mouth uh, flask. There we are. Let's seal that back up. I'm also going to throw in just a little bit, somewhere uh, around a quarter teaspoon or an eighth of a teaspoon, somewhere in that range of uh, just some yeast nutrient, just to give that yeast every advantage that I can. And then this other flask here, I've just got some uh, filtered water. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Filtered water, and I'm just going to top this up until it hits 200 grams total. Growing up starters like this is absolutely amazing. You wind up with extremely vigorous, healthy, vital uh, yeast starters. 
um, and being able to have a wide range of uh, yeast strains on hand, I've got over 40 right now, is super cool because it allows me year-round uh, to use private stock uh, strains, all kinds of different um, strains that I've um, sort of just gathered over the years. Um, so there we go, I, I, 202, whatever, I can deal with it. Um, I'm also going to throw in, of course, the uh, stir bar, give that a little mix here. You want to be careful and make sure you don't have any uh, lumps of DME stuck to the bottom of this because that's a really good way to crack and break one of these flasks. Um, and then just the last thing before I cover it up is I'm going to add just a drop of this deformer solution so that when I do hit a boil on my stove top upstairs, I'm not going to have a nasty boil over situation. Just throw the foil on there. Um, and uh, now it's time actually to take this upstairs and get this boiled just so that it's um, relatively sterile and ready to receive that uh, yeast tomorrow. All right, so I've got this on here really low. Uh, just to make sure that I slowly approach a boil, uh, there are a few few things to bear in mind. First of all, that, that defoamer in there, uh, as well as that low heat will help prevent it from having a volcanic eruption, which will be disastrous. Uh, the other thing too is that I was very careful to make sure to have the stovetop surface clean and the bottom of the flask free of any sort of moisture because the, uh, anything there can crack this and especially as you get into some of the larger flasks, they get quite pricey, so nobody wants that. Anyway, we'll come back when this is hitting a boil. All right, well, I just hit a boil. I'm gonna turn that down just a touch because that's just a little bit more vigorous than I need it. And I'm gonna let it go for about 15 minutes and then turn it off, uh, let it cool down for, uh, I don't know, just a couple hours, uh, hours here on the stove top uh, out of the way, and then I will toss it in the incubator. All right, so um, after about 26 hours here, you can see that this is really quite active. I was actually just swirling it, which is why the, the foam got so high. It was originally down about here. Um, the amount of time that this takes is usually around um, anywhere from, I'd say, about 18 to uh, 30 hours or so. It really depends on the amount of yeast that I get on that initial loop. This was a, a decent sized glob and the Saison strain is really nice and strong. So uh, just over 24 hours was definitely enough for that. I probably could have stepped this up several hours ago, but I just wanted to wait until now. Um, so here we go. I've got this 200 mil starter. I star sand this area here and I've got the Bunsen burner going. So that means that I can open this up without fear of bacteria or anything descending there like that. I'm going to just swirl this up just to make sure that there's no yeast kind of stuck on the bottom. And I'll just quickly flame the opening of this. We will add this yeast into here. And then I will cap it back up. And now this is going to go into the incubator. It's got that stir bar in here, if you recall. So I'm just going to uh, get this set up here in the incubator. All right, so here we are in the incubator on that stir plate. Uh, I can probably turn that down even just a little bit. I don't need it uh, going quite so aggressively. But this is going to take uh, approximately 12 hours or so until it's ready for the next step. So it's time just to prep um, the next, uh, next couple of flasks. All right, so for the next step up, I'm going to go for a grand total of 1500 mils, which means that uh, because I'm going to be adding 200 mils of this, I want 1300. And again, using that same ratio, uh, that 10 to one ratio, I want 130 grams of the dried malt extract going in here. And then I'm going to be topping that up with the uh, filtered water. Then I'm going to do the same thing. Because these are going to be stepped up uh, not too terribly far uh, from each other, I'm going to prepare uh, this flask as well as the 2500 mil flask, um, both uh, tonight so that um, it'll be tomorrow morning that, I'm trying to multitask here, you can see how well that works, um, so that I can step up first thing in the morning into this one, and then probably about four hours later, I'll be able to step up into the next one. So. Let's just see here. I'll just get the last of this DME into there. Again, uh, both of these next two steps will have just a little bit of uh, yeast nutrient. Again, just an eighth of a teaspoon and topping up the filtered water. So we're going to go to a grand total of 1300 mils. So I'm going to need just a little bit more water. So I'm going to uh, 
get this topped up. Um, I'm also going to prepare the uh, the second flask here. That one's going to have 2,500 mils. So that plus the 1,500 is going to equal 4,000. And I'm going to give those uh, a boil and then we'll see them once they're uh, ready to go. All right, so this is uh, about 13 hours after I last um, pitched into this. It was uh, definitely nice and uh, foamy and whatnot. So totally ready to, to scale up here. Um, same process as before where I've just got a little star sand area over here and whatnot. Um, I'm just going to loosen these caps just a little bit and quickly flame. And I will add, and of course I'm just going to make sure that the uh, stir bar uh, goes in here because I'll be needing that to keep everything into suspension. There we are. Reflame cap. And this will go back on the uh, stir plate. Uh, not too terribly long though because 200 mils going into 1300, it's not a huge step up. Um, so it's not going to take too terribly long for this to be actively fermenting. Like I said, this is for a four liter pitch going into two carboys that are going to be, uh, it works really well anywhere from the 1040s to 1060s uh, original gravity. Uh, no problem. Uh, if a person wanted to go with just a, a, a single carboy with a two liter pitch, I would have gone uh, into the initial 200 mils and then into 1800 uh, at this step and then that would have been the the complete um, the complete starter but because I want the 4000 um, I'm doing it like this so anyway back in the incubator so just to give you an idea this is two hours after I stepped up into this uh, 1500 mil total flask and it's already um, reasonably active uh, I'm going to give it a little bit more time just because I'm not in a rush for this but um, once you get that healthy initial starter, starter vial going, it really does not take long um, to do this. All right, so I'd say that this 1500 mil uh, flask here is ready to step up into the 2500 mils for that total of 4000. So I'm just going to quickly flame here. It's a little tricky with uh, this large flask on here, but I will get that flamed up and then pour everything in. Again, ensuring that I get that stir bar into there, just like so. Try not to burn my hands. And quick little flame. There we go. And I will get this uh, into the incubator and it won't be too long and this will be ready to rock. Well, I told you, less than two hours in here um, since stepping up uh, into the four liter flask, it's pretty much ready to rock. I've turned down the temperature in the incubator. I actually did that a little bit earlier this morning down to 70, um, just because there's no point in rushing this any further, but this stuff will be uh, totally ready to rock by the time it's uh, good to go into a beer. Well, and there we have it. An extremely active, ready, eager to please, uh, yeast starter right here, some uh, Savage Saison. Um, one other point of interest here perhaps might be the fact that this is only showing up at uh, 3.75 liters in volume, um, which is one of the reasons why I like to weigh stuff out as opposed to simply relying upon the uh, volumetric uh, measurements that are on these flasks. So anyway, as you can see, that was less than 20, uh, less than 48 hours, I should say, um, from start to finish. And I went from a tiny little glob of yeast to uh, enough yeast to readily ferment uh, 10 gallons of beer. So for this particular flask, I will be splitting it into two carboys, so I will kind of uh, eyeball that as I do it, which is where the whole process becomes a little less scientific. But either way, I haven't had a problem with that in the past, and everything turns out super awesome and happy. So yeah, if you want to check out more uh, videos on homebrewing and stuff, absolutely check out the channel. And until next time, keep your at 11.